So I've been to a few dinner parties lately that have devolved into YouTube pissing contests the moment the food is cleared. <laughs> I guess some of you have too. I love Maru as much as the next girl, but I think it's kind of sad when you go to your friend's house to catch up and then you let the internet serve as the centerpiece for your conversations. At one of these dinner parties, I saw this. I saw this slightly unsettling footage. Apparently, they come out knowing how to use an iPad nowadays. <laughs> There's no sound. He goes on to create a masterpiece. How many of you have slept with your mobile devices underneath your pillow? I have. OK, well, you're not alone. 83% of people between the ages of 18 and 30 have reported sleeping with their mobile devices. Um, when I heard that fact, I put that thing in the kitchen. <laughs> we celebrate the advance of technology. It's one of mankind's greatest uh, achievements. But as we wait in line for the latest iPhone model, we don't notice that something big is happening all around us. Something that has the potential to change our course as humans, like the discovery of fire or the invention of electricity. We are turning into robots. Are there any Battlestar Galactica fans here? OK, me too. Um, well, those you guys know, this is number six, a Cylon or robot um, from Battlestar. It's a post-apocalyptic sci-fi show where humans have created robots who have evolved beyond us. And the show depicts a war between humans and robots. And I find this to be a totally believable concept. Um, millennials already have the chip. They don't know a life without the internet or computers to go to for the answers. And I don't know if you guys have known, noticed, but uh, these baby robots are everywhere. We walk around with headphones like we're plugged into some kind of mainframe. And when we plug in, we don't engage with the environment around us. We don't see the other humans that we're crossing paths with. And I think this makes us sort of like zombies. And in my opinion, if new robots are being born every day and the rest of us are turning into zombies, I think we are going to be finding ourselves living in a post-apocalyptic society pretty soon. Cities are some of our best creations. They are full, intricate, complex systems that support most of the needs and desires we will ever have. They really are true works of art. The ability to appreciate and preserve this art is a uniquely human trait. No machine will ever empathize with others, be moved by beautiful music, or understand a sarcastic joke the way a human being can. And if our society keeps evolving this way, I fear we are in danger of destroying our Mona Lisa, our most recognizable work, the modern city. I'm afraid Google can't help you out of this one. After all, it's just another giant robot. But I don't think it's too late. I say we're 65% human, maybe 75 to 80 on a good day. And I feel really lucky to work at the Bold Italic because we're working on an answer to this kind of thing. Um, I don't think we have a cure, but at least a way forward. As an online magazine in San Francisco, we're using a combination of storytelling, events, and artifacts to rebuild human connection in our cities. We're leveraging the technology and the free flow of information on the internet to encourage the human connections that are vital for our cities to thrive. We love cities. The Bold Italic has become one giant love letter to San Francisco. And in learning how to make it as powerful as possible, we've discovered a formula. We believe a thriving city has three points of engagement. The first is citizen to environment. This is the physical layout and structure of a city. How the grid works, freeway versus bike lanes, hilly or flat landscape. All of these things impact how you maneuver and navigate every day. You couldn't overlay Seattle on Miami and expect for Miami to suddenly behave like Seattle. Those retirees couldn't handle all that flannel. <laughs> I live here in San Francisco, and I walk almost <coughs> everywhere. But recently, I was in LA walking, and I waited at an intersection while the light changed three times, and the cars are going all the different ways, and I never got a walk signal. Um, I'm just waiting. You know, people don't walk as much there, and the city reflects the behavior. Our behavior shapes the cities that we live in. The second is 
a citizen to a business. Businesses are the lifeblood of a city, and they are the stage for most of our um, experiences. They provide the things that we go out and do. Restaurants, bars, shops, theaters, and gyms. Can you imagine a city where you couldn't go out to get a cup of coffee or run down the street for a gallon of milk? And finally, a chorus of voices. Healthy discourse keeps the city interesting. Where else can you find such a diversity of opinions, ideas, and backgrounds all living together? Some voices you listen to and some you don't, but the strong voices stir up discussions and become part of our public conversations. You can see that in this triangle of engagement, the thing that unites the three points is direct human connections. Everything we do at the Bold Italic is about reinforcing these connections, and we do this in three ways. Every day, we release a new story on our site. Um, all of these stories are written by people who live in San Francisco, and they're all in the first person. They're not news stories, but personal accounts of life in this city about what makes this a special place to live. We recently shared Ali Pape's story called Friend Me. She wrote about how difficult it was to find a friend when she first moved to San Francisco. She tried all kinds of things just trying to find a friend, um, and it was really hard for her. The honesty of her story really resonated with our readers. It was the top story on our site for a few weeks in a row, and it had tons of comments. Lots of the comments were requests from people like, I can't find a friend either. Could you please do something about it? So we held a meetup, um, which was just like a good old getting to know you session for some strangers. And it was a great example of online leading to an offline experience. And I think that scores a point for the humans. <laughs> <laughs> we also like to throw a good party. There's nothing like a little food and booze to reinforce a human connection. My favorite of our events are called Micro Hoods, uh, where we go into a block radius, a little neighborhood that has kind of like a lot to offer but is off the radar. And we work with the local food vendors, shops, and musicians to throw a block party. And the goal of the Micro Hoods is to just get people out there discovering a little piece of the city. There are so many, and there are so many hidden gems. Another point. And finally, we reinforce these human connections through artifacts. It's not about consumption, but about preserving the memories of our everyday lives. I think the things we own can have stories behind them, and I like my own things better when they do. Rather than this, a made-in-China trinket that says San Francisco, you could have any of this stuff. This is a photograph from our first pop-up shop out of uh, Voyager, which is a small business in the Mission. And everything in this photograph was made, designed, or produced in San Francisco. And I love telling people that. It's a testament to the creativity and the talent all around us. And it's part of why I like living here, because these people live here too. Um, we do these things because they are human and because we love cities, and the two go together. At the Bold Italic, we have this idea of winning at dinner. We want to help people have real, interesting things to talk about, things they actually experience so that they don't have to pull up a YouTube video to save face at a dinner party. I recently had a strange experience at one of our events. I was working the event, and a woman slightly younger than myself came up to me and said, did I tell you? I said no. I had no idea who she was or what she was talking about. <laughs> she said, oh my god. I mean, she's getting right up in my grill. I can't believe I didn't tell you. They're still together. And I said, I'm sorry. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> and she looked me in the eye and she said, I'm talking about your butt cheeks. <laughs> I was dumbfounded. <laughs> I really could not think of a single thing to say to that. <laughs> I sort of like felt my hands float back there to check that <laughs> nothing was amiss, and it wasn't. And um, I felt like fear and shame wash over me. I just slunk away, unable to come up with a response. But after a few minutes, I regained my composure, and I decided, um, this 
would probably be a pretty good story. I'm gonna go tell my friend Sarah, who was also working the event. And I guess it was a good story because the moment I left Sarah, she ran to tell another coworker. <laughs> and as I was making my way through the party, um, this other coworker came up to me and said, so, I heard they're still together. <laughs> and this kept happening to me that night. Uh, the whole party was talking about my butt cheeks. <laughs> the story had gone viral in a physical space. My point is, you can't win at dinner if you stay at home all the time cropping and filtering your life for Instagram. You have to go out there and have real authentic experiences, real human interactions. As we become more comfortable with our relationships with machines, I think that the human interactions can almost start to feel unnatural. They certainly make you feel more vulnerable than if you had stayed home with your computer. But at the end of the day, this is how you win at dinner. The stories you earn are the good stories. I challenge you to win at dinner without uh, using YouTube or pulling up your iPhone for the answer. Here are a couple ways you can get started. You can leave your phone at home and get lost in your city. Ask a stranger for directions. Or instead of liking things on Facebook, go to your favorite store in person and tell them how much you like what they're doing. These human interactions will help keep your life interesting. They will preserve humankind's greatest work of art, and by seeking these interactions, you'll keep scoring points for the human team. Thank you.